It is the year 1780 when Comancheria dominated the vast southern plains. Comanches raided New Mexico to the west and Texas to the south at will, removing the resources and enslaving the inhabitants of those lands and channeling them to allies and trading partners to the north and the east. But in the late 1770s, they encountered major obstacles. The American Revolution cut off the supply of guns coming from the French and the British. Droughts formed former allies to migrate into Comancheria, leading to wars along once secure Comanche borders. And then, in 1781, right at the height of their power, a wave of smallpox disease swept through Comancheria. Half of the Comanche population was dead within two years and Comancheria descended into a realm of horror and sadness. In 1783, the greatly weakened Comanches made the pragmatic decision to open up peace talks with the Spanish. The Spanish, who were unaware of the extent of the epidemic, readily accepted. Perhaps, the Spanish colonies might survive after decades of weakness. The Comanche offer of peace came at the perfect time, for the Spanish had just decided to overhaul their relations with Native Americans. With the American Revolutionary's victories, the Spanish immediately foresaw the westward expansion of the United States, and they knew that if Native Americans were hostile to New Spain, that American settlers could ally with them, arm them, and push Spain out of the Americas. If on the other hand Spain built positive relations with Native Americans, their alliance could be the best way to prevent westward expansion, and the Comanches would be the most important important allies to have when the time came. The Spanish were serious enough about peace to back off their policies aimed at civilizing the Comanches and converting them to Catholicism. They even made efforts to build a new partnership around Comanche cultural norms. In Comanche culture, trade was viewed as a bond that signified mutual support, friendship, and even a sense of extended family. Trade that appeared to be based in greed or coercion had quickly destroyed former attempts at peace. For the Comanches, that included Spanish attempts to sell inferior products, inflate prices, or refuse to trade goods that they possessed in abundance. In their effort to maintain peace with the Comanches, Spanish officials went to great lengths to conform to these norms and to engage in the generous giving of gifts that Comanches viewed as a sign of friendship. Realizing that Comanches believed that frequent personal and physical contact was critical for strong relations between peoples, Spanish officials journeyed into Comancheria and welcomed Comanches into the very cities they had recently come close to destroying. There, the officials publicly embraced Comanche leaders for all to see. The Comanches took the peace equally seriously. They allowed the Spanish onto their plains to hunt for bison. A small group symbolically asks for baptism. And when a group of Comanches broke the peace by raiding into New Mexico, the famed Comanche chief Equare Chapa personally executed the leader of the raid. The Comanche chief later sent his own son to become the son of the New Mexican governor. The governor adopted him as his own and committed to instructing him in the language and ways of the Spanish. Trade flowed freely between Comancheria, Spanish Texas, and New Mexico, and Comanches, Texans, and New Mexicans freely visited one another's land. It was a remarkable turnout. American westward expansion went into full swing in 183 after President Thomas Jefferson facilitated the American purchase of the Louisiana Territory. Spain had been unable to prevent American settlers from pushing west into Spanish Louisiana and had sold the territory back to France, which then quickly sold it to the United States. The purchase doubled the size of the young country. Whereas Spain had once hoped that Spanish Louisiana would act as a buffer that would prevent American expansion into the southwest, they now hoped that a strong Comanche nation, allied with New Spain, would serve as that buffer. Comanches, the Spanish thought, would push back hard against encroaching American settlements. As the Spanish hoped for the Comanche to push back the Americans, you can also push on the like button if you find this video entertaining and educational. It's just a small effort and I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Now back to the story. The first Americans, however, did not come as settlers but as traders, and the Comanches welcomed that trade. Already in the 1790s, American merchants had been evading Spanish officials to journey into Comancheria for the Comanches' famous horses and bison hides. By that time, the Comanches had been organizing their society around horses for nearly a century and had become the recognized masters of horse breeding and training. Just as so many peoples before them, the Americans gravitated towards the Comanche horse trade. 
Before the Louisiana Purchase had even been made, Americans had purchased thousands of horses from the Comanche. Now that the new American border went right up to the Comanche doorstep, trade became more. Especially because Congress, in an effort to break the Comanche away from its alliance with New Spain, sent emissaries to Comancheria to showcase America's wealth and promise access to it. The Spanish looked on in dismay as Comanches embraced American trade. By this time, Comanches had also repaired their relationships with the Northern Plain tribes they had been at war with. Comanche trade was once again orienting itself to the East and the North, leading the Spanish to fear a return to the days of Comanche conquest. And then, things got much worse for the Spanish. In 1808, Napoleon invaded Spain, cutting off Spanish resources flowing to its positions in the Americas. Generous trade with the Comanches became impossible. Then, in 1810, Mexico initiated its war of independence. New Mexicans, many of whom spoke Comanche, had adopted aspects of Comanche culture and were more a part of Comancheria than New Spain, embraced Comancheria when the war erupted, and were able to keep the peace with Comanches. Relations between the Comanches and Spanish Texas, however, quickly collapsed. Comanches responded by systematically raiding the Texan colony. Using American guns, they removed much of the wealth of Texas and sold it to American merchants. They destroyed what they could not trade. Within the span of a few years, Texas had ceased to be a Spanish colony. It had become the realm of the Comanche. Thus, when Mexico emerged as an independent nation in 1821, the entire northeastern section of the new country was Comanche dominated. The Spanish had been unable to control the Comanches, and Mexico was even less able to do so. Hundreds of thousands of Mexicans had died during the war for independence, and its economy was shattered. Mexico's all-important silver mines, one of the greatest treasures of the Spanish Empire, had been destroyed. Part of Mexico's post-war plan had been to develop the nation by taxing foreign trade, but high taxes simply led to smuggling and tax evasion. Mexico had expected to secure foreign investment in the wake of the war, but investors looked at Mexico and saw an economically risky environment. Investment didn't come. In a state of desperation, Mexico took out enormous high-interest loans from the US and European powers. They quickly devolted, leaving Mexico's credit in shambles. As Mexico's economic turmoil descended into political chaos, officials were more concerned about internal rebellions closer to Mexico City, or even worse, the very real threat of reconquest by Spain, than they were about the Comanche. Even so, these officials viewed building peace with the Comanches as essential. Like the Spanish, the Mexicans saw American expansion into their territory on the horizon, and they viewed Texas and New Mexico as an important buffer zone between the United States and intrusion into the core of Mexico. In 1821, Mexican officials journeyed into Comancheria, where they spoke before a grand council attended by 5,000 Comanche. After three days of deliberation, the council agreed to a truce with the Mexicans. The following year, a delegation of Comanche chiefs journeyed to Mexico City to attend the coronation of Agustin de Terbide as Emperor of Mexico and to sign a formal peace treaty. The treaty promised generous trade with the Comanche. The Comanche, partly to show their strength to Mexico, promised to raise an army of 27,000 warriors to fight Spain if it sought to reconquer Mexico. Question. While there were as many as 30,000 Comanche people by the early 1800, the United States listed fewer than 1,500 Comanche members in the year 1920. What do you think was the cause of this dramatically shrink of their population size? Was it by European diseases? Was it by the extinction of the bison which led to famine? Was it by genocidal killings of the Comanche people by colonial powers? Or was it a combination of all? I would like to see your opinions in the comment section. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about our latest videos.